All right, sometimes the best ways to start learning about something, especially sampling, is to learn about the worst parts first, just so that we can get those out of the way. Now, some examples of bad sampling are voluntary response sampling and convenient sampling. Uh, voluntary response sample is one in which the people self-select themselves into the sample. Uh, that is, a sur as a surveyor, you would essentially ask for volunteers to respond. Studies that use voluntary response and bi are biased towards strong feelings. Typically, it is people who feel strongly about an issue that volunteer respond. Um, also, some prime examples of voluntary response sampling includes calling into a radio station to ask for your favorite song, for a song by your favorite singer, answering a survey or a meme on your friend's blog, or filling out a comment box at the back of your professor's classroom. Uh, in other words, you're probably not going to do it unless you really feel strongly about it. Uh, some other sorts of voluntary response samplings is someone who sends out a mailer and then it comes back and he says oh answer this survey please and stuff honestly unless you really feel strongly about it you're not going to get a proper bias back you're not going to get an unbiased or at least de defeated type of biased response back you're only going to get the, the people who care about that issue and stuff and even then you have to hope that they send it back so for like example if you sent out a like a hundred surveys and you asked for the question on the state of the NBA like uh, do you think that all the owners are racist or do you think that that Donald Sterling was only an isolated response if you don't know what I'm talking about just go back to last season in the NBA and just see what happened with that whole situation but uh, those people that only were going to know what I was talking about would answer it. And even then, even if they did know what I was talking about, if they felt like he wasn't being racist, they probably wouldn't answer it. Because first off, I worded my question not as carefully as I should have, but uh, I've also sent it out to them. But then, even then, I've sent out a hundred surveys. Some people are not going to send them back because they don't agree. Some don't feel strongly. And then guess what? My sample size goes from a hundred to about, let's say, 30. Let's say I get 30 back. So now I'm dealing out of 30 people. I cannot say I dealt out of 100, but I'm actually dealing out of 30 coming back. So I've just shrunk my sampling size by quite a bit. Okay. Uh, convenience sampling is a simply choosing a simple uh, sample that is very easy to use. This can be done by mailings, phone surveys, face-to-face -face surveys, or a variety of other settings. Some prime examples of convenient sampling are the interviewers frequently seen at a mail uh, at a mall with a clipboard. Note that this is also a volunteer response, or standing at the front of the phone book, or starting at the front front of the phone book and calling out the first n numbers. Okay, so that's a very interesting response right there. Now, there are an infinite number of ways to construct a bad sample. Volunteer response and convenience are merely the most common infractions. Remember to ask yourself some key questions when confronted with the results of a sample. Okay, so this is hugely important. Uh, what is the population being represented? How is the sample selected? And uh, will this sample be a good representation of the population? Okay, so for example, a convenient sampling would be, um, I'm just going to ask my friends. I actually had an AP, oh, this killed me. I had an AP, I had two AP statistics students last year who turned in their final portfolio. And one of the girls said, uh, I'm conducting, and th you guys will learn about this next semester, but I'm conducting my, uh, I'm making my experiment on the study of being sports and your GPA. And she said, well, I couldn't get anyone else outside of my sphere of influence that weren't athletes. I couldn't get them. And so I only used athletes' responses and stuff. And so not only did she get a voluntary response sampling, but also convenient sampling, which was she took bad samples. But she also had a very biased sample because of the fact that she didn't continue to go out and get samples from, you know, kids that weren't in sports and just work with it. So her data is definitely going to be skewed. And when she does her hypothesis testing, 
it's definitely going to be get skewed. So a lot of issues with her final project, which she only earned a 50% on, and then she had to work again to get the grade up, uh, was the fact that she had just didn't pay attention to her sampling question or her sampling population. Okay, and because of that, her final grade suffered. And basically, the whole question I had to throw out, and I had to say, you know what, you need to show me exactly what you did wrong and why, because this is the worst type of answer. And sure enough, she came back and she figured it out and stuff. But it was just, it was something that could have been, it, it was something that could have been saved by this question alone. What is the population being represented? How was the sample selected? And will this sample be a good representation of the population? So it just it just needs to be very careful how you do it, okay? All right, that's it for bad sampling. I'll talk to you guys later.